So a little discussion on the Gaia Discord uh, channel, the official one, not the one that I run, but the official one, has got me looking at some really old stuff that I posted on DeviantArt like a decade ago or longer. And I just kind of wanted to go through some of the old stuff that I made and with you guys just to kind of see what I used to make and uh, some photographs that I took and whatnot. So let's go ahead and just take a look at some of them. So this is my old one, Artex 7. Um, it's my old Deviant account, Deviant Art account, and uh, I posted a lot of stuff, but I haven't posted on Deviant Art in well over maybe six, seven years or something like that. Um, I'm not entirely sure how long ago my last post was, but let's go ahead and take a look at some stuff. Uh, back in the day before I changed the name to PWN Design, I was VooTuts, and the reason why is because I was making mostly video tutorials on Vu. And you can kind of see here, I started way back in Vue 8.5 is when I officially started making videos for Vue. Um, but I was actually using Vue 7 and Vue 6 before that. And then I kind of just moved away from that. But let's go ahead and take a look at some old stuff that I made. It'll just be interesting. I know this isn't a tutorial or anything, but I figured it'd be fun to kind of show you guys what I made. I'm not going to go through all 112, but I'll just pick out some of the ones that I really liked. So this was a cloud study uh, render that I made in Vu, and uh, I really liked the way this one turned out. And I really like cloud studies because they they kind of get your mind wrapping around different things. And here in Utah, this right here, I actually tried to recreate the exact same atmosphere and cloud coverage that we had growing up at the time. There was a storm that blew in. And I was like, well, that looked really pretty. I'm going to try to recreate that. And I actually have the image for it. It's really hard to see because I didn't do a very good job at taking the photo, but it's right here. You kind of see the glowing behind the plants and whatnot. And I mean, that was too, back in 2012. That's when I started doing a little more photography stuff. And I really liked the way that looked because I like darker photographs. And I really liked the silhouette. And that was out in my front yard at my parents' house. Um, some other ones that I really liked were um, this one. We were coming back from California, um, down through, coming up from the south, southern parts of Utah. And this is a little tree in a field close to my hometown at the time. And nothing about this photo is edited. Um, I just focused on that tree right there and took a photo of it while we're moving in the car. Uh, the sky looks really hazy, and because it was, there was fires all over the place and it just made things look really cool. Um, I called it Speed Tree, but not the program. I thought that was really fun. Um, when I was making rocks, for some reason DeviantArt wants me to join up every other click. Um, but this one right here is called Rock of Ages and I actually still have this rock model and I use it to this day. Just a forest of trees with trees growing on the rocks and on and so forth and just kind of sticks out was really fun to make. I made that rock in view using the hyperblob option uh, method. Um, some other studies that I made was this one. Uh, this is a field out the side of Stockton, Utah. That's where I grew up. And uh, it's going up a path towards Lehigh is what the place is called. I really like the way that looked. So I took a photo of it. This one is edited. I really liked the sepia tones back in the day. It's kind of interesting to see how your different like methods and appreciation for different styles styles of art kind of change over time. This was a flower that was growing in my parents front yard um, and I really liked the way this one turned out. I took this on a Canon T1i. I still have that camera. It's the camera I use to this very day for all my photography reasons. I was using the prime lens. They're 100 millimeter prime lens. Uh, macro lens and took that photo. I really liked the way that turned out. Um, I really like macro photography. This is a lake that's out in Stockton. It's all dried up now. It's It's been, it, it has water in it through like maybe two or three months of the year and then it dries up because we are in a desert so it doesn't stick around for very long. There used to be fish in that lake and it's called Rush Lake and I really remember, I remember going down there and fishing a little bit. There was like uh, bass and bluegill and carp 
and I think some catfish that were in there uh, a long time ago. The lake used to be really high. It used to come up to here. There was It was about maybe 15 to 20, maybe 30 feet deep. Um, but it, it, it dried up and it was expected to, it, it was expected to dry up exactly when people said it would dry up because it might, it's, it, there's very little water runoff into there and, um, it wasn't expected to stick around. So, but it fills up once a year after winter's over, it sticks around for maybe two or three months after summer starts or before summer starts. And then it just kind of dries up. Still pretty though, to go down there and take photos when it's filled. Um, some more photography study right here. Uh, again, I really like macro stuff. This is, I believe, um, was it alfalfa? I believe this is alfalfa. I could be wrong, but I think it's alfalfa. Um, and it was just growing in my parents' front yard. Uh, I was still, I wasn't living with them at the time, but I would go out there and visit all the time and I graduated in 2009 and moved out of my parents' house in 2010, I believe, into my own house and um, graduated high school in 2009, I should, I should mention. But I still did a lot of photography and I like the way this one turned out. Again, it's just more uh, photography. Let's take a look at some renders. Come on. There we go. So, uh, as you can see here, I rendered, I, everything I did, I did as a study during this time because I was still really learning, but I was sharing what I was learning. And so you can see stuff like this. I was really proud of this render because it was a very nice volumetric forest um, with terraformation. And this is the terraformer right here. And you can see it's trees were going. That's the story behind it anyways. These are using, I was using VU at the time and VU assets. So they don't necessarily look the greatest um they, they're very straight but again it's just one of those things that you learn over time but i really like the way this turned out i've been trying to recreate this a lot in the past and i always fell at it because i i just got this one perfect with the way i wanted the atmosphere just never went back and recreated it exactly the same way here's the terraforming right here this is what it looked like before um and then you can see they're kind of working. I was, and you, it's very uh, noisy in the lights because I wasn't using really high render settings. All right, um, more. This one right here is still actually my all-time favorite VU render. It just has really good distance, uh, very good atmospherics. It's just a very simple scene. I have you know, different types of vegetation at varying levels of height and stuff like that. And I think this one turned out really well. I always try to go back and recreate something like this too. Um, you can see here, I made this in VU 10 at 4.2 billion polygons, uh, two hours to set up and five hours to render and 10 seconds of Photoshop. And that 10 seconds was just to really put my tag down there. This was done in 2012. So just a couple years after I moved out of my parents' house. That one is still one of my all-time favorites. Um, I always I also like doing ocean uh, and cloud studies as well. I always like doing some renders above the ocean with some good depth. These turned out really fun, really good in my opinion back in the day and was really fun to create. This one right here, I actually have printed on a canvas because I was really proud of this one too. It was a 4K render. Um, and my wife really liked it too. She really liked how the clouds looked really soft and there was just a nice silhouette of the space station there. And uh, we have some stars that are all over the place in the background. And I just really liked the way that one turned out. Let's go to looking at some mountains. Uh, this one right here, this is actually the one I posted in the discussion because the, the discussion was how to get details on steep cliff faces with height, uh, height maps. And this is a height map that I brought in from World Creator. Or no, not World Creator, sorry, World Machine. Um, and it has some pretty steep cliffs and uh, some snow and some nice soft snow uh, all the way down to the mountain and some clouds from view. And you can see that even here, this rocky structure uh, has nice sharp details on the steep surfaces, and that's because everything was triplanar mapped at the time. And I think the snow was actually procedural. So you're gonna be able to get non-stretching surfaces with the procedural materials to begin with, but the rock material was actually a, a rock material that I took myself 
when I was out doing some texture studies. Um, and I used that and I just triplanar mapped it and changed the UV coordinates a little bit just to make it really look. I think in this case I made it kind of mid-sized. That it wasn't very small, but I made it kind of mid-sized and it got some pretty decent textures on it. I really like the way the atmosphere turned out on this one as well. And you can see here I really tried to do the the dark moody scenes and didn't really work out all that well. This is a world control uh, or geo control render. So this was geo control right here made with geo control 2. The geo control is what world creator is now. So uh, if anybody remembers playing with geo control this uh, a long time ago in 2011 is when I made this render. Um, this is the the mountainous fractal that I made in uh, GeoControl, rendered in Vue. Uh, let's keep looking. This one right here, I remember this one. This one was really fun, and this one. I like this one because I actually managed to get fog over the mount or water. And the mountains look really nice in the background, but I would go back and change a lot of these if I could. Uh, I just don't use Vu anymore. I wouldn't be opposed to going back to it, but this was almost exactly a decade ago. Uh, in 2011 is when I made this render. And I remember making this at my house. This is, I was making this on a computer uh, that was running a, let's see if I have the, uh, I don't have the, the stuff here. So what I was using was a 560 Ti and a quad core process, or no, it was a dual core processor. Uh, it was an Intel dual core processor. And I can't remember what the actual name of the processor was or else I'd tell you. Uh, again, here's like those sharp cliff faces where you can get some nice texture details on the cliff faces with a height map. Some more fat, uh, macro photography. I wanted to get this one printed and give it to my mom because these are one of my mom's favorite flowers. Just never got around to it and I don't think the print would be all that great because it was a low resolution, but I wanted to print it out for it. Just never did get around to it. Um, this is when the um, terrain fractal was introduced into VU. And the nice thing about the terrain fractal is that it, sh it gave you a shape, an overall shape uh, for a terrain. And then you can introduce the um, mountain fractal, uh, the mountain version two, I believe is what it was. And you can blend them together and you can turn off all of the blending for the, uh, the actual mountain noise and then just introduce the rock noise. And then what you ended up getting was these nice big rock clusters all over your landscape. And you can see them right here in the background, up on the tops of the peaks and whatnot. And so you got really good um, rocks forming on what I called the bluffs here. So this was a terrain fractal mixed with a rocky mountain fractal. And all the atmospheres you see in these re renders are ones that I made for Vu. So I didn't, I didn't use any pre-made ones. They were all made um, by myself just in studying stuff. And you can see here, um, I did this one. And then I tried to replicate it here. Didn't really turn out too well, but I mean, it is what it is. Uh, let's see. Some of them are just garbage, but I posted anyways. So like this one, hot garbage. <laughs> so um, again, it's just one of those things that you do when you're trying to learn. You just, I mean, I posted literally everything that I made. This one right here, hot garbage. I mean, I would not post something like this nowadays I would spend a little more time in fixing it but that's supposed to be a desert sand and rock kind of look um, let me show you the very first critiqued render if I can find let me show you this one real quick actually so I was trying to make a desert plateau scene and I got the texture down I really like the way the textures look but the overall fractal um, making the the desert plateau look I didn't really like I don't like these sharp peaks right here I could tone down the noise a bit more here but
but the background and the foreground I really like the lighting in this one too and the clouds and the, and the texture itself is actually really nice in my opinion I would go back and use that I would change the landscape around a bit but I would go back and use that um, so the very first critiqued render this one so there is a person that my brother knows uh, well we all know her uh, but she was over visiting I'm not gonna say her name just because she's a private citizen I don't want to give out too many details um, I was actually rendering this out while they're over visiting and she looked at it and she's like well you got the texture down and the background really sells it because it looks really distant and the texture looks really nice but other than that I would focus more on the actual uh, landscape maybe it looked like it had some weathering to it and she didn't even have now she's not an artistic person at all and then she gave really good critiques and I was like huh erosion and this is actually where I started really diving in the world machine I had it before this render I just never really used it because it was just another program I was trying to learn and I decided to take this landscape I made I exported it out of view and I imported it in the world machine and I eroded it a little bit and you can actually see fluvial erosions in the one that I eroded but I didn't post it I don't know what happened to it um, I wish I knew because I'd show you guys but it turned out much better and I showed her after that and she was like that's perfect and I was like all right cool uh, let's see uh, this image right here is actually used as an image on a YouTube video and I tried to recreate this one this is the first one and then I was like well you know what I didn't really like the way this one turned out so I redid it and I did this one and I liked this one a lot more and this is actually an image on a YouTube video that was released by a guy named Ben Hansen he does a lot of musical covers musical score covers and he wanted to use this one and he was like can I and I was like yeah he's like what are there any royalty fees or anything like that I'm like no just use it go ahead it's all right I mean we're all artists struggling here and uh, I don't know how many views his video got but he did a really good cover of it and uh, a buddy of his actually animated like mist or dust flowing through um, the uh, the light and whatnot it looked really good so I appreciate uh, the shout out for that this is my very first render my very first view render uh, it's supposed to be sand dunes uh, but it's my first render um, I might not have posted this as my first render in DeviantArt but uh, it was back in 2010 is when I posted it and um, I rendered it in my so I guess I can go back I actually lived with my parents when I was getting into VU, but I moved out in 2010 into my own house. And this was probably the first render that I made at my parents' house. My first render ever, actually, other than like kind of poking around and uh, trying to understand things. But I really liked the way the atmosphere looked. This one right here is probably the only atmosphere that was built into VU that I used. Uh, but that's because I, I literally just opened up the program and was trying to learn it. So I, I, I don't even, what got me started is that I already liked photography and I wanted to make things on the computer. And how I found Vue was actually using their desperate, um, uh, their uh, free version for artists. And then I moved into Extreme. I, my very first couple paychecks that I saved up, I ended up purchasing Vue Extreme. And that first render turned out probably better than the majority of my renders that I made after that. Because then I made this. <laughs> oh, jeez. And then I made... And then after that I made this. And this one was terrible. <laughs> this is totally like your default student three... three or CGI student scene. <laughs> so... Um, yeah, and here's some cloud study. Uh, this is a photograph. It's not, wasn't made in VU, but it's a cloud study. A storm was blowing in. Um, this is actually the moon peeking through the clouds. It was a very big, bright, full moon, and there was a storm coming through where I was living at the time, and it uh, looked pretty good. So other than that, 
the most important thing on here is this dog right here. Her name was Kina and she's a Schipperky and she was the cutest little dog ever and my family has always loved Schipperkies. We've had a couple of them in the past. They, they're not very long lived dogs but if you take really good care of them they can live for a while. Um, she was about maybe 10, maybe, okay, maybe seven years old or something when she died, but she actually got a piece of steak and choked on it. And my parents didn't know that because when she would, they would give her little pieces of food, um, and then she would grab it and go run off and she just took it and ran off like normal, but she inhaled the whole thing and they didn't know that she was choking on it until they found her in uh, their bedroom and she was already gone at that point. It was really sad. It was a very bad day for everybody because my, my dad's favorite kind of dog is a Schipperky and my mom really liked her too because she was a very well behaved dog and the only dog that she actually really wanted. Be, I had four dogs in the house at, at one point and the only dog that my mom wanted and liked was Kina and I loved Kina too. I felt really bad because of a couple years after we got her, I think it was like two years after we got her, I actually took her out on a little road trip because she liked to travel and she was a really good companion because she wouldn't run off. She would stick by you. And I took her out of my car and put her up on top of my car because she liked being up there. She would go up there and look around while I'm getting my camera bag out and whatnot. And then she got super excited when I got everything out and I shut the door and I slammed her paw on the door and it made me feel really bad and I had always felt guilty even to this day because I don't and any small or any animal in, in general but especially like small animals that you know they have more fragile limbs and stuff like that can get hurt really badly when somebody does something stupid and I did something stupid uh, not on purpose but needless to say it was still stupid um, she didn't have any broken lip or bones or anything like that but she did limp on it for about a day and then after that she kind of got over it but she was still a really good dog after that it was like it never happened and I shouldn't feel guilty about it, but I still do. So anyways, those are, oh yeah, this was a photography study for uh, my photography class in high school. That's my buddy, Steven. That's me. And he, I was like, well, we got to do something really dramatic. I mean, we have to, um, we have to really do something uh, that will stick out and kind of play with the lighting a bit and like the... Uh, the mood and he was like well why don't I just lay on the ground and I put my hand up and then you can like pretend to kick me and I was like well that's pretty violent don't you think I don't know if I want to do that and he was like no it's all right go ahead and so he got on the ground and he posed like this and I remember right before we took the photograph um, he was like I was like you look like you're posing should I draw you like you are posing, but you look like you're posing for something a little bit more intimate. Should I draw you like one of my French girls? <laughs> and he was actually laughing right here. He started to laugh. And then when he started laughing is when I got up to go kick. And then as soon as I got up to go kick, um, the camera shutter went off. And so what's funny is that I just look really pissed. And then he looks like he's about to laugh. He does look like he's saying no. But anyways, I thought that was funny. I put he got what he deserved. Um, uh, it was an expressive conceptual. Um, so is what that person said. Anyways, that was that was pretty fun. He's a good guy. Um, we still hang out to this day. He's been one of my best friends since like before I can remember. I met him when I was seven, and uh, we still go and hang out. I went fishing with him not too long ago. Uh, this one right here actually earned me a couple of awards on Vu's website. One of the best in show kind of awards a couple times running. Um, and I called it the universe bubble. And all it is is spheres and a lot of them. And I lined them up in a grid pattern and they all kind of reflected off of each other. And then I had a um, galaxy nebula kind of look in the background that would show up in the reflections and then in each bubble I put a little black uh, sphere in the middle of it and this one I protruded out a little bit so it looked like a pupil uh, you can see how it's not 
completely inside the bubble like these. This one kind of sticks out a little bit. Um, and that one uh, earned me quite a few rewards, and I thought it was pretty fun. So I don't always just do landscape stuff. I always and I I did a little bit of human study, and this one is terrible. I was using a Daz model. I still use Daz. I think it's all right, but um, I would go back and definitely change up a lot of stuff, especially with the knowledge I have now. Um, I use global radiosity in this one, and then um, let's see. This one, see, I tried to recreate that volumetric forest look but this one I thought I'd have a little more fun where it's more warm on one side and more cool on the other but that is about it I don't think I don't think there's much more that I would be willing to really show you uh, it's just fun to go back and look at old renders and see how far you've come or if you've if you've gone anywhere for for that matter and I think I've come a long ways I don't really do a whole lot of rendering now I mostly do just teaching but when I do renders, I, I don't do them as often, and I don't post them as often as I did in the past. Like I said, I just posted everything that I ever made, whether it was good or not. Now I'm a little bit more selective in what I post. I, I mostly post what I think looks really good. Uh, let's talk about this one real quick, actually. This one's actually really cool because I was using the, uh, like I mentioned not too long ago, is I was using the Terrain Fractal. And uh, on the train fractal, I used the Rocky Mountain fractal blended together, and that's what gave me these big rocks right here. Um, you can see here it's a Blender node tutorial. Uh, it's a beginner level, and I just down I just had people download them for free these these tutorials for free, and they can use them however they wanted. And this one turned out really really good for the time. It's not good now, but I really like the way the atmosphere turned out. So over here you have just this normal like uh, aerial perspective going on right here but over here you can see like this fog or mist kind of creeping up the sides which I thought looked really cool uh, for the time but without further mention of any other renders I'm gonna go ahead and call it good here thank you guys for watching thank you for exploring um, <laughs> my old renders and I hope you guys found them humorous or uh, or anything like that. I don't really, I'm, whatever kind of word I can say, it doesn't really matter. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next video.